Hard Gaming here, and today we're actually back into another tier list video. Now, option selects are gone, the nerfs have happened, the buffs have happened, and we can safely make a new tier list up to date for today's age and for honor. This is going to be fours, uh, a tier list. These are personally my opinion, but. I think my opinion is very valid here, and I think a lot of people would agree with me on this. So, let's get down to people that we definitely need to have on your team right now that are just upright stupid. Best character in the game right now is Raider, hands down. He is great with unlock tech. He does insane amount of damage. He has one of the scariest mix-ups in the game, and he does an insanely in amount of damage and he can just neutral everything with his un neutral unblockable which is kind of really scary and it's really hard to his and he's fast his attacks are fast and kind of hard to deal with even if you have the series x uh that doesn't really even need any more to speak on that second orochi is the second best character in the game right now he same thing he has an insane insane 50-50s storm rush with his undodgeable kick or not undodgeable his kick that can be spammed instantly there's an infinite storm rush tech there's um again another unblockable that's scary with it's just really hard to counter him with majority of the people and he does a lot of damage it's really hard to shut him down especially so that's another person you definitely would need on your team. Those are definitely, those are hands down the two best characters in the game right now. These two are just straight up busted. Like, not even. They're busted. They're busted. Alright, next person would probably... Goki still one is probably the best guardian uh, guardian the best heavy in the game right now since warlord got nerfed he's not really that good at because people that used warlord at high level play and just play in general usually tried to do uh the fishing strat i'm not really sure how to explain what the sh that strat is for warlord but let's i'll tell you about that when we get to him uh goki is just again unlock tech's really good he can do into a lot of good uh combos and uh insta kill people with his teammates if they know how to do the uh the combos in forever like it's really hard to deal with him and his bash is still really busted that never changed like at all uh, let's see. Uh, who would be a fourth? Probably, if I had to say. It's kind of hard. This one's kind of hard because this one doesn't really necessarily have an order. Like, this, it does have an order. But for these two, like, they could be, um... Where is he? I am trying to find him. There he is. These two can be easily switched. Like, you can have a JJ and have this, these three, or you can have a BP and have these three. And you'll just almost always guarantee a win. Like, they're all busted. These are, like, again, great with unlocks, big damage, has is really hard to chase down with certain people, and is just a big nightmare. Now, let's see about these other characters that are uh, really good to the fight. Zan Hu's really good because he, again, <laughs> all these. Do you see us? Do you guys see the trend here right now in this meta and how it's played? It's all unlock teching, all external attacks. So all these characters are godly at doing that. He's really good at doing that too, but he kind of like he can get stomped out by Raider or Rochi now. And JJ because he just does more damage. Goki does the same thing. Um, he's definitely probably one of the better people to have on your team if you don't want to have those people on the top. Um, then we would definitely have Aramusha. Aramusha is 
actually really good right now. He's kind of scary to fight if they know how to play him really well. But because he's kind of the same thing as Orochi, but he's a little like he's he's what Orochi should be. Like he he's dumbed down Orochi because he doesn't have the dashes and everything, but he has the cancels, and that's what's really hard to get past with uh, people sometimes, depending on who you're playing. Most people play, but Aramusha is really good to beat down people. He's he's busted too, kind of in that regard. I'm trying to think of who else would be really good here in this tier list for at least this one. Um, Berserker is still really good as always, just because he has the pressure, the hyper armor. The hyper armor alone really hurts, and he has an attack that's really easy to get into his unblockable, which is a good mix-up because no more techs. No more option selects, so that just makes it a little more complicated to deal with with him. Um, who else? I would like to say... Hmm, I'm trying to think here, guys. This one's a little complicated. It could be complicated. I would like to say... Drum roll? No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, let's go with Hito. Yeah, let's put Hito there. No, let's not put Hito there. I take that back. Let's put uh, Warmonger there. Warmonger is definitely there. Warmonger's there because she's really good with. Again, she has the one of the better best feats in the uh, in the game. It's really good for dealing with team fights, and it's practically a death sentence if you're in a team fight and she hits you with your four. That, that alone could literally change a game. Like, if she were to have her fourth feet and were to go against all these four and they were there, that would be an instant, like, game changer. Like, she is the only character in this whole game that could, like, that change the tide of a, f of a fight just because of her stuff. But the problem is with her, she doesn't have any good track downs. She can't really chase people down. Her undodgeable is obviously her forward undodgeable, but everybody who's external blocking, locking onto someone else to dash away from her, automatically blocks her track down attack because they're, all you have to do is just put your guard to her side. So she's kind of hard to open people up if they're doing that, and you just get external and it's not good. It's really complicated to do that with her personally. And from what I've seen around what people do, they can't really do anything with her. Um, then we got... Kyoshin. Kyo uh, Kyoshin is really... Kyoshin's pretty dang good. He can guarantee uh, free heavy from anyone in the game. With his multi with the, If you get him in his uh, cuts, he has an instant uh, unblockable is good the problem is with him it's kind of like people that play against him like that know how to play against him it's pretty easy to get past like all these characters can easily get past the kyoshin no problem and all these characters can pretty much get past the kyoshin no problem because they can either be overly aggressive and scare him to death with working unblockables or just bash him to death and it's kind of annoying to deal with. Me personally, as a 60 Kyoshin, would feel like this is probably the best spot for him. He's not bad. He's just kind of lacking in terms of overall pressure when it comes to all of them. Uh, now, let's see who else we got here. We have... Hmm... I like to think Hito would be here then. Hito would be here then because he's just brain dead. He's not hes not crazy hard to play. It's just you spam your different timed heavies and you can scare him with your kick. And that can lead into a lot of things, which is good. So I'm just going to keep him there. Then we have people that you could be good with. Like they could go in this tier list too. Like the people here could fit in here. But it kind of depends on, like, if you're really knowing this character. Gladiator is really, really good in that regard. Not many gladiators 
know really how to play him, but the ones that do could easily be up here, like, because he has a scary, his toe stabs are easily to get, easy to get now. He has good uh, def offense capabilities, great stamina uh, cost for all of his attacks. His, again, he has a uh, un unblockable that leads the bleed, but it's, it's, everything's more scary now because there's no more selects. That used to be, it's just, anybody like that is just way, way scarier now. Um, let's see, who else would be up here? Griffin is another good character. He's not as good as he used to be. Like, uh, honestly, he would probably still be here, even if he didn't get his, like, if he never got, if he still had his neutral bash, he would be right here still. Just because uh, he would, he wouldn't be able to do his shield bash parry anymore. Because back then, when the selects were a thing, there was a thing where you can do is you can you can bash and you could uh, you can parry or just bash him. It was kind of like the bash tech for him. If they were to throw an unblockable and you do the bash at the same time of it. You would parry if he lets it rip, and if he doesn't, he tries to guard break. You would just bash him and get the light and go into your chain mix up, which was really stupid at the time. But then they took it away. So aside from that, yeah, that's pretty much where he goes. Can't say he's really good. Can't say he could be really annoying and hard to deal with. Uh, he's really fast with his attacks. He got really good damage. Um, that's pretty much it about him. He kind of doesn't have anything crazy, crazy, you know? Then we got Nabushi. Nabushi is really annoying to deal with, especially when you got, uh, you know how to play her. Because her bleed doesn't really give revenge that much. If you don't block it, obviously. So, ganking with her is really good. She has a scary mix-up when you're with anybody else. Because you can't really dodge, because in fear of her on dodgeable heavy that does 35 damage if you shoot if you're bleeding because of her passive that gives you more that gives her more damage if they're bleeding not not fun to fight it's very scary scary indeed then i would have to say we got warden's really warden's good he has a good mix up he has unblockables from any sides that can be easily baited into guard breaks and that and that. The problem is he doesn't really have any unlock. Um, he doesn't have any team fighting presence, really. It's kind of more like, let me aim at someone else on, with an unblockable and try to bait you into do dodging so I can uh, guard break you and hopefully that works. <laughs> That's kind of what he is and all he has going for him right now. But... Yeah, he could if you're if you know how to play him and you're like a warden sweat, it's very possible you can be really good there. Now we're gonna go to the people that are just plain hard to play. Like people, oh, I take that back. Warlord's really good there too. Warlord, like yeah, his fishing is gone, but he could still be annoying to deal with, especially if we're playing. If we're not talking comp games where they ban all the perks, he's still. Any, if you're a warlord player and you have all the perks which are the only perks you should have for all heavies which would be bastion last stand and uh ventral barrier i think yeah um he's hard to kill very annoying to deal with he could still get into mick get into good combos and stuff but his main thing that made him s tier back then was his uh ability to infinite shield bash people and that's gone now, so he's not that good anymore compared to all these people. Um, so yeah, he can be really annoying to fight. Now, these are people that are going to be hard to play. Like, these are just people that if you run into anybody above here, with the, if you play any of these characters here and you run into any of these characters here, you're not going to have an easy time winning the fight. It's going to be really hard and annoying to deal with. And this is just for... Oh, overall people like most people will have a hard time doing this so we got who would be okay so it'd be 
the way I'm doing this is the best to the least best. Like, obviously, like, he's the best, second best, third, fourth, uh, first, third, second, third, fourth, and so on. So, uh, the absolute hardest to play here would be, oh no, I take that back because he doesn't belong there. Hard to play characters would be kind of like characters you can kind of do okay with, but you would have to, you know, know what you're doing. Would be Lawbringer. Lawbringer is really good. He has a, he has a good mix-up. He does. But it's the fact of opening people up in that, to get in that mix-up. Because all these other characters are really super aggressive. And if you're not a parry god or just gets really lucky in baiting people and stuff, you're going to have a hard time dealing with any of these characters above as Lawbringer. So, yeah, I can safely say that. Highlander is another character that's really hard to, uh, to play with with the overall populace of people that play this game. No one really knows how to handle the two forms of fighting with him still. Like, people still don't really know how to fight offensive stance and defensive stance. Like, on paper it sounds really good, but actually doing some of this stuff sometimes is like really hard to fight, especially when you're fighting all these people who can just be easier to fight. So you would most the only Highlanders that I've seen that were good with Highlander are 70 Highlander rep 70 Highlanders. No in between. I've never seen any other Highlander that knows what they're doing and do good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna switch that there. No, no, he's not hard to play. Yeah, he actually is kind of hard to play. Um, yeah. No, maybe. Oh, I'm going... Okay, okay, I know what I'm doing. The least hard to play will be going downwards. So he's the hardest probably to play here. He's then him. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting kind of mixed up in my own list here. <laughs> um... Valkyrie is another character that would probably be hard to play just because she has a good mix-up. She doesn't have any unblockable presence whatsoever. And she doesn't do that much damage. Uh, especially when all these characters have a lot of health. And have some of them have the... These three in particular have the best perks in the game. So you're not killing them. You're practically... You're tickling them. It's just, it, you have, you can make maybe one or two mistakes, you're dead with these characters. While they, these characters can probably make at least three to four mistakes and still maybe win. Like, you actually, ha you have to put in a lot of effort to kill any of these people. Um... <clears throat> Jormungandr. Jormungandr is also really hard to play efficiently just because everybody kind of, when they're in a gank scenario and they're all in the Yorms like there with the gank, their impulse is to just knock you out of stamina. That's cool and all, but that gives you so much revenge and the other team does, and her teammates usually don't know how to really capitalize on doing anything off that. And it kind of usually ends up, from my experiences, all the Jormunganders I fought and people in Jormunganders tried to gank me and my characters, they usually just ended up giving me revenge. It just doesn't work out. They, most people don't know how to play Yorm efficiently. So this is another hard to play character when, and you will have a hard time fighting any of these characters because you can either get outspaced, out aggressive because all these characters are super aggressive and can easily just stomp you out and just faster and more damage just overall honestly it's just not worth it um then we have yes yeah, then we have centurion centurion's really uh Again, he kind of has the same boat. Like, he doesn't do much damage, but he has a good combo potential if you know how to use him. But a lot of people don't know how to use him. 
Like, for instance, here's a little thing that me and my friends did with him before. Uh, me, as a Kyoshin player, if I get a multiple of the Fujin cuts, where you do the multiple cuts on the person, he can charge up his fully charged heavy and gets the hit off while I'm doing the cuts. And then as he's going for the punch, I give the, the enemy a light to stop him from moving, gets the punch off, does the stab, and I get a free heavy. People don't know stuff like that. Most Centurions don't know how to do that stuff. So it doesn't really uh, work out for them. And they just give people revenge. Then we have Shaman. Shaman's another... Is kind of not that... Like, obviously, hardest to play. And then it goes down and it makes their lot easier to play, you know? Shaman's really simple. The problem is getting off her bread and butter attack, which is her bite. Her bite takes too long to do, and in a team fight, that's not going to work because all these people will knock you off. So you don't really have much of a presence. You don't you have an unblockable, obviously, but it's not a long range unblockable, so it's not good enough for an external really to hit multiple people, which is what the meta is. Anything that can be hit, if you can hit multiple people, you're good. Um. Another problem, she's an assassin. Assassins aren't that good in this game right now, except Zerk and Orochi. Those are the only... And Gladiator, too. Like, as Glad, Zerk, and Orochi are the only good assassins in this game right now. It's always heavy meta. Hands down. Never, never nothing else. And then we have Conk. Conk is also really... Un he can... He could be the easiest person to play here out of this whole list, just because, one... He has the best perks in the game, you know, heavy power. And he can just be a bash spammy annoying person to deal with. Problem is, option selects are gone. He relied so heavily on his option selecting zone select to parry most attacks and stuff. But now that's gone, you can't do that anymore. So it's kind of hard to really do anything like that. He doesn't do enough damage. He falls off in the end compared to all these other characters who could just murder you into oblivion. So yeah, not good, not good. Now, these people are based on, like, bad, bad, badder than that, bad. The one right here, wh whoever is going to be the last one, is the worst person in the game, just so you know. So, whoever's the last out of these ones are the worst in the game. So, we got... Tiandi is hands down the worst Vanguard in the game right now. He has no unblockables. He's pretty easy to see his attacks wherever he's going. It's it's simple, really. Just if he dashes right, he's gonna do a right light attack. It, you don't have to parry it. It's not about style points. You just block. Just be safe. <laughs> so again, it's pretty easy to deal with him. He anybody up here can just shut him down in an instant because they're more aggressive. It's kind of the only th he's he doesn't have good perks for team it's all about his own perks are all about him which is his shield and his leech which is good like it's cool for him but it's not overall good and most Tiandis that I see get stomped like really bad because they slowed down his light speed a bit I don't know if people noticed that but I did and it's not that good anymore definitely not good nope 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 then we got the Peeper Keeper. Again, Peacekeeper kind of has the same problem Warmonger has. She can't chase anybody. She has no chase whatsoever. And she has no pressure. Unless she's unless they're bleeding. But it's really hard to get her bleed off. Because all you have to do to beat a Peacekeeper in a team fight is external block her. You lock onto someone else. And then you just block all of her attacks. There is nothing they can do about it either. It's so easy. And you could even external parry them. Because they're just going to spam lights. Because that's what they do. It's just really bad. She's <laughs> she's a bit grody. Nuxia is another problem. In 4. She doesn't do much. She's really easy to counter. She can't do anything. Her traps give too much revenge. And um, overall not worth it. Her second perk is the only good perk is her cow traps but it hurts your teammates so that kind of sucks 
she all these these characters are just gonna have trouble with everything either damage or or attacking people they're just not good not good see this is where i get kind of hard okay i know what to do there shaolin belongs here he has the same problem as valkyrie but he's a watered down version of valkyrie like if valkyrie was valkyrie uh, if I take that back, Shaolin is Valkyrie. Valkyrie is the cooler Shaolin, if that makes sense, because he has a lot of stuff, just like Valkyrie, but he does no damage. And his bread and butter, which is his mix-up for kick and unblockable, uh, is really easy to dodge from external blocking and locking onto other people. He has no pressure. He can't get any combo you can't really get any mix-ups to help his teammates to give him a good uh hit in there you know he can't combo into anything really with his teammates and if he does they get a whole bunch of revenge not really good to do it in force worst character in the game right now as always shinobi nobody knows how to use his dash properly and his guard and his health bar is still the lowest in the game he it's you never see an Orochi, the, not an Orochi. I'm sorry, you never see a Shaolin. The only people who play Shaolin, oh god, I'm saying Shaolin. The only people who play Shinobi are uh, Rep 70 Shinobis. Anybody else that tries to play Shinobi is just gonna get sh pooped on. Now, if uh, if Shinobi came back with his rework that was there, he would be here. Maybe even here or here. Maybe even here, depending on if they change anything. Because he was busted. He countered him really good. And he also countered kind of Orochi 2 in the same time because of them dodgeables. But if they bring him how he was in the uh, WeWork state when he was, you know, playable and everyone was playing him, he would probably be the best character in the game. But as of right now, he is definitely the worst character in the game. Tell me what you guys think down below. Let me know if I'm kind of on the money. I think this is personally a really solid list. Probably the most realistic list you can find for console, Xbox, up to date. Uh, if anything changes, I'll be sure to make another video. If you guys agree with this list and you guys want to see a 1v1 tier list, let me know. And... I hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me what you think down below and who you think should be where. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.